Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. We continue with our discussions on MDMT and ASME Section 8 Division 2. This video is part four and it contains information about high alloy steel, such as stainless steel, um, like 316, for example, non-ferrous alloys, and a discussion about bolting. And we're going to reference directly from um, ASME Section 8 Division 2 the 2019 edition. So there's a few rules with regards to toughness requirements, which is of course related to the MDMT. First of all, impact testing is required blanket for S17400, which I know in industries known as 174 uh, pH stainless steel or, or is martensitic participation hardened steels and there's not a lot, a lot of explanation I could find for that requirement for impact testing but I, I believe it ha probably has to do with the fact that the, the microstructure uh, it's uh, is sensitive to heat because it's participation hardened and they want to keep its cor uh, very good corrosion properties and and um, is toughness and and uh, strength properties so they want to make sure that you know during the welding that um, there's not an issue and um, there's three types of tests so they, they want you know fairly good testing here they want the base metal the weld right in the middle of the weld and uh, the heat affected zone the HAZ which is the interface between the two and uh, here's a few more notes. If your MDMT is greater than 100, minus 196 centigrade or minus 320 Fahrenheit, then you, you test at the temperature, uh, at the, uh, that MDMT temperature you're required or lower. And um, you need to test to minimize the lateral, uh, minima, minimum lateral expansion, the position. Uh, and opposite the notch, and then that notch must be at least 0.38 millimeters or 0.015 inches. If the other case, if we are colder than that, so we're very cryogenic, then the only allowable uh, welding processes are shown there, gas metal arc welding, uh, shield, um, uh, SAW, and, and um, PAW and, and, and GTAW welding processes. So let's continue here. So there's some more rules here with regards to 316L and 308 filler metals, which is a very, very common materials used. Um, you know, 308s uh, and 316. So uh, they, if you're using you know, gas tungsten arc welding or, you know, or GMAW weld processes, then there's some um, some criterion that you need to know. The the, the ferrite number FN is, uh, for 316L must be equal to or less than 11. And that's a ferrite number is a characteristic of the microstructure. They want to make sure that the, the that the um, that there's no, um, that the microstructure is even and there's no participation out of the, uh, on the grains of materials or sugaring. So, and then 308, the, the ferrite number must be between 4 and 14. And uh, the code has lots of guidance on, on the criterion for that testing. Like you need to use a special scope to do that kind of um, work in there are certain conditions to make sure that it's repeatable and impact testing um, is, is at 100 minus 160 degrees centigrade is required and, and they require um, 
you know, with the base metal and the heat affected zone and in, in the weld. So lateral expansion must be um, opposite of, of the notch and the notch needs to be at least uh, 0.53 millimeters or 0 0.021 millimeters, which is a, which is different, bigger than the last one. So if, um, you know, there's some rules. If one C1 does not pass the criterion, then, um, then a filler, FN filler metal from each lot, um, each lot used in the production test must be less than or equal to what's tested. And then the impact testing must be performed at minus 196 with the three specimen locations. And, and it must be lateral to the notch, uh, the testing, and the, the notch must be at least 0.53 uh, millimeters. And fatigue testing is also required. And the, 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 the testing system to use would be ASTM E. 1820. Continuing on, C3, if there is a lateral expansion per one or two and it does not pass, then fatigue testing is required. Now, austenitic stainless steels are exempt from impact testing if this heat treated is done at 460 to 900 degrees centigrade, which corresponds to uh, 900 to 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. And the exemption for that, exception for that is 304, 304L, 316, and 316, they don't require that special heating treating requirement. And the MDMT must be uh, greater than uh, minus 29 degrees centigrade or minus 20. And category A and, and B joints uh, production uh, impacts testing for those joints are, are required. So austenitic ferritic duplex stainless steels are exempt from impact tested if it's heat treated between 315 to 955 degrees centigrade. And we continue impact testing ferritic chromium stainless steel and Martensitic stainless steel are impact test exempt if it's heat treated between 425 and 730. So let's continue. Exemptions from high impact testing for base materials and HAZs. So austenitic chromium nickel stainless steel we'll talk about first so the first condition is is that the you know it, your your carbon content has to be pretty low 0.1 percent carbon and the mdmt must be greater than 196 for the minus 196 for the exemption to occur and if you're greater than 0.1 then the mdmt then uh, you need to be have your MDMT at, at least minus 48, which corresponds to minus 55. The, for castings, uh, the MDMT, uh, it's they're they're dropping that, you know, they're making it uh, less, you know, like um, they're saying basically minus 29 degrees, and um, so they're they're not giving you as much value for that one. Now, when we continue, um, part B, chromium mang manganese nickels stainless steels, which is the series 200 
uh, stainless steels. If you're, you know, your carbon content is no more greater than 0.1% uh, carbon by weight, the, and the MDMT is greater than 196, then you are exempt. And, but if your carbon content is greater than 0.1, then your MDMT is only exempt to minus 48. So it's very similar to the other materials. And for castings, you're basically st uh, set to minus 29. So all forms, product forms, are, you have an exemption if the MDMT is equal to or greater than minus 29. And, uh, but there's a condition. So for austenitic ferritic duplex steels, then the nominal thickness, uh, if it's less than or equal to th like three eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters, then you have an exemption. And if you have ferritic chromium steels and you're less than one eighth of an inch, then there's a blanket exemption as well. For castings, uh, martensitic chromium stainless steels, if you're equal to or less than a quarter of an inch, you have an exemption. So more on exemptions from impact testing. So D, impact testing is not required if the maximum obtainable Sharpie impact uh, specimen has a width along its notch uh, less than 0.25 millimeters. Impact tests are not required um, if you go, uh, but except by 31142, which we talked about, which is heat treatment. Uh, if the applied stress, stress ratio in tension to the allowable stress. So if, you, if your, your part is um, not stressed highly then, and you meet and you, uh, you follow those exemptions for heat treatment, then you can get an exemption. Now, if you're less, so it, so basically, um, this applies. This exemption applies to a ratio of of a coincident ratio of 0.3 for class one materials and 0.24 for class two materials within section eight, division two. Now the applied stress is, um, is the stress from the pressure and nonlinear loadings. So there's specific types of loadings which um, in division two must be followed, including those that are listed in table 411, which results in a general primary me membrane uh, tensile stress. So non-ferrous alloys. Let's move to that. Uh, non-ferrous alloys. Uh, you would you would go for, for those testing requirements to table three A four aluminum alloys. An example would be SB twenty ten or sixty sixty one, which is one of the most common alloys in the world. Would be shown there. Uh, table A three A five. We copper alloys. And a very common alloy is 95 copper 5 aluminum. And there's the UNS codes all shown there. And, and there's a host of them. Now, table 3, which is A5, which is a nickel nickel alloys. One of the most common ones that, that I've used in my career is Hast alloy, excellent material. And it's uh, C276. Table 3. Uh, is uh, A3, A6, and it's for titanium alloys. So alloys that do not experience significant changes in properties, okay, they're used for cryogenic applications. This is sort of a summary. So those materials, you can use them, you know, for, they don't have the same issues as carbon steel. So the minimum temperature, um, you know, there are some exceptions, but basically for aluminum, uh, you're good to minus 269 centigrade, which is, you know, 
phenomenal, which is pretty close to absolute zero. And that's why you see them commonly used for you know, refrigeration systems. And, and copper alloys, you're down to minus 198 degrees centigrade. Titanium, titanium alloys, um, a sort of a semi, you know, cryogenic material, minus 59 or minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So bolting materials, the last section. So bolting materials, this is for use with flanges, which you know have to be designed to um, as per 416, which is the you know the part four of section eight division uh, two is by designed by rules, and part five is designed by analysis. So part A is impact testing is not required if listed. In the following tables okay so if you go to table three four low alloys such you have bolts uh, a common one is sa uh, 193 b7 very common if your bolt size is less than two and a half inches then your mdmt has a listing of minus 48 okay high alloys are in uh, bolting materials are in three five and uh, table 3.6 is the aluminum and copper alloys. 3.7 is the nickel and nickel alloy. So it's very, you can see how very well organized it is. It's, it's quite easy to, um, to find what you need. I'm gonna talk a little bit about analysis by design to part five. So there's some different rules for that. So impact testing is required as per the What's, what's shown in table, uh, table 3A11 for bolting. And uh, permitted bolting includes SA193B7, which is a very common bolt. And uh, yeah, so you need to, there's a criteria for testing that the bolting, when, when required, um, the, the, there has to be three Charpy tests and the in the average of the tests must be f at least f uh, equal or greater than 41 joules or 30 foot pounds and the minimum of any of the three tests must be 34 uh, joules i hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you this was provided by athabasca engineering solutions we'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.